All right, what's going on, guys? Uh, just here shooting the shit with, uh, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. My name's uh, Angel Cortez. Uh, I'm a former Army Ranger. Um, I was in the military from 08 to 16, um, but I was a, a, a regular Army first. Uh, I spent some time in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, but before my time in the military, uh, I, was, I was a former gang member. I controlled a crew within the gang, um, and, you know, at first I wanted to kind of just protect myself and not be messed with, and then kind of spiraled more than what I wanted. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm, I'm running a crew, we're, we're, we're uh, selling guns and drugs, and, and as you can imagine, the deeper you go into this world, the more connections and things you, you get to see and be part of. Um, but now, I'm, I'm, I don't do any of that, obviously, but uh, I work for Strategies Group, which is a company, we're all former Special Operation guys, either active duty or um, veterans, and and we, we're based in, in LA, and we do a lot from from consulting to, to tactical training and mentoring, um, security, you name it. Awesome. Um, and from what I've seen on your page, obviously we do, you do a lot of community work as well, right? You want to talk, you want to, talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. So at, at, you know, like most, most veterans, when you get out, you kind of have, you, you, you have, you're struggling, right? Cause at least for me, for, I, I, I started asking myself questions that I didn't ask myself. I started thinking about things that I never thought, and I was processing now the deaths of all my friends, and, and then it doesn't help that that my friends are still getting hurt um, when I'm out. And, you know, so so I realized quickly, I was like, look, man, I lost my purpose and I lost my community. I needed to find that. And and when, you know, even the dudes who, in, who I may have not really liked in my, in my unit, I'm like, fuck, I even miss that dude. You know, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know things are bad. that's rough man <laughs> but but in the outside man i mean i was killing it you know you you you, you couldn't you couldn't say otherwise because like i was getting straight a's and b's i was going to school to become a registered dietitian um i was training at classic fight team which i still am or, or and raw talent boxing i was competing you know uh i may not have the fight iq as some of the pro fighters in those gyms but physically because of my experience in regiment you know but Push up for push up, punch for punch. I can I can match, right? But um, so on the outside, it, it didn't look like that. But but quickly, I learned like, hey man, I I, I need to find a community, find a purpose. So I just started hosting USC fights at my house. I would buy the pay per view. I would I would buy the food, and I would invite veterans from my school and the gyms. And that's how I started. And then um obviously the the first it was like two three of us and the next thing you know it was like 12 of us and then you know sometimes i've had as high as like 65 people on my house um and but you know i i was gonna have my third kid uh with these events for the pay-per-views i was either going negative on my account or barely making ends meet my wife was like look hey i know i know these meetups mean a lot to you and and the veterans but like hey we can't keep doing this we got another baby coming right. and by then i had already gotten a, a small social media presence because i started sharing a lot of my combat footage um and i'm like you know what maybe i can start a company and 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 i i have a thing for halloween you know and, and overseas i had skeleton gloves and a skeleton bandana and and i'm not the only one who's had you know mask or gloves or anything like that overseas and i won't be the last one right um, right. um, but that ha Halloween's my shit. So when my son drew a pumpkin and the company that I run is OG pumpkin, I was like, you know what? I'm going to use the profits from this. I put up, I made 200 stickers and I was like, let's see if anybody wants one. And then, and then within an hour or two, all 200 were gone. And so I'm like, okay, I got something. Um, and then it kind of just now is to where it's now where I got almost 700 people with an OG pumpkin tattooed on them. Oh, yeah. um, I got, uh, you know, I've done some big events that as, as big as we're, we're well, part of, you know, some big events that, you know, we had about 800 people show up um, and it's reached like SpaceX engineers, medical personnel, SWAT teams, special operations from other units um, to construction workers, to plumbers, to you name it, they'll send me and they'll have an OG pumpkin thing. They've heard the story. Um, you know, and, and they see the work that I've been doing, you know, and, and like, for example, you know, when I went to, when I went on a field podcast, 
uh, obviously that exposure made me a lot more money and I was making on average about $10,000 in profit. And th this is during COVID. I mean, I, I don't, I grew up poor. So you know what I was doing? I was buying target carbs and I was buying, when I was putting $400 on them, I would scratch off the numbers and I'd be like, look, if you got kids or the elderly, you need to buy something, buy it here. I was dropping off food at food banks that as a kid, I used to be there in line trying to get some food. Um, and I would just throw big ass events. Like some of the big events is I call it a, a, a tacos and vehicles is, is, or vehicles and tacos shooting range, right? I buy vehicles. We shoot to and from the vehicles. I got a taco guy catering it. Um, the last one I did, I had a massage therapist there giving out massages as well. I had a uh, banda. I had um, uh, like a juice company with like, like ginger shots and stuff like that. And yeah, you name it. It, 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 giving out CBD, giving out uncanny CBD. Right. And, and, and so I was just trying to help, man, because I this is I wasn't trying to create like some big ass company. I just wanted to keep doing the UFC fights at my house. <laughs> yeah, right. And spiral into this massive fucking thing you have going on now. A hundred percent, man. And and it's growing. And then now I'm starting to think like a businessman. Somebody who spent some time at Hurley uh, reached out to me, and they're like, "Hey, man, I heard you on Andy Stump's Clear Clear Top podcast, and and uh, I want to buy you dinner or lunch." He bought me lunch. And he talked to me and he's been mentoring me to, to think more bigger, right? Um, he spent some time at Nike, Hurley, and now he's a part of other companies and he's been part of other projects. So the direction OG Pumpkin is going, it's uh, I, I now believe in myself in that way because I, I didn't see myself as a businessman, right? I didn't go to business school. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't think I was creative at the time. I didn't think, you know, the idea of being a businessman has never been in my head. Right. And I think that's uh, the army doesn't exactly build you to be a, build, a businessman either, right? Yeah, um, it's more like a warfighter first, essentially. But and in in a lot of sense, it's not even warfighter first. Maybe in special operations, it might be warfighter first, but everywhere else, not so much. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's it's interesting how they uh, you you weren't really prepared to, for it, but you know, all of a sudden, you know, your mentor kind of pops into view, kind of starts to guide you in that in that direction. Um, and that's awesome, man. As far as the community stuff goes, I don't see a whole lot of that these days um, within like the, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to say that, I guess you could say the veteran community. Um, there are a few names out there that definitely do it, but by and large, most of the people that I see that get out usually just do their own thing or they just, uh, they kind of keep to their small clicks. So seeing that you're extending beyond even your service, right? You're, being, you're extending beyond service and you're, you know, you're getting those construction guys, you're just getting men in general to come together and kind of build that community, which is um, more than a lot of people can say, and it's definitely uh, definitely needed. And it's a part of that thing we talked about yesterday on our, on our phone call about like leveling up the community, right? And uh, most people think that community is just exclusively, you know, veterans, right? Or even combat veterans. And it's like, no, that's not it, man. It's like, this is a men thing um, that we're missing right now because we're obviously seeing um, the, the war on men, right? And the war on masculinity where it's not, you know, it's not accepted in certain circles to be a masculine man, right? And people seem to think that it's only being violent, knowing violence that makes you a man. It's like, no, man, that, men are just as much nurturers and, um, you know, want to build up other men, make men harder, um, you know, and those are the, the parts that people don't get to see, right? Um, so uh, we talked, we talked community leveling up, which obviously yeah it was an unintended consequence of your uh, ufc fights <laughs> but now you actually built this thing and it's it's pushing forward and that's awesome man and and you know that's what i want and and i try to be as positive as as a positive you can you know you you hear army ranger you hear a former gang member but that doesn't mean i'm some 24 7 violent hard charging dude you know i've thanks to psychedelic therapy and, and stuff like that and being around the, the right people um I only turn it on when I have to, right? Other than that, man, I'm, I'm as, you know, chill as possible. You know, uh, through some of the um, events I've had, some people, unfortunately, they'll be like, damn, dude, like, you're exactly how you are online. That's how you are in person. And, and I'm like, well, then how, 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 how am I supposed to be? And they're like, well, because I've met so-and-so. And they actually, and then and then it bumps me out because you're like, fuck, man, these people have big, pre uh, uh, big uh, uh presence presence on in our community and 
and it's for the dollar, man, and it's for the cloud, and it's for that, and and, and for the longest time, I've, I've I've tried to be quiet about it, but but now you know uh, I gotta voice it. We we need um, to level up as a community, as as the, for the dude who I know they hate the words like influencers, whatever you want to call yourself, right? The point is you got a following, and you got a standard, and you got a fucking you're either going to hold up the standard. So we can all better ourselves or you can just fucking make dough because within the first year of me getting out, like I was telling you the other day, I found out that you can be a company and say you're for veterans and you do veterans events, but actually you did, you were part of one event a year ago, but you just keep making money off veterans, right? Because no matter what, they get paid on the first and the 15th. I mean, you're active. If you're a veteran, you get paid on the first, um, and then, and then, you know, due to, yeah, they might have been in special operations or maybe they weren't. And if they weren't there with their content, it's implying that you were in the special operations community. Can a civilian own that same stuff? Yeah, yeah, you can. But you're in the military law enforcement community and you're sharing this and you're sharing that and you're portraying. You're not saying, you never said you were, but you're portraying something that you're not. And yeah, it's, it's essentially lying through omission. Yeah, we, we've seen it time and time and again. It's about what's not being said to kind of force the image of what you know people are going to kind of gather because civilians don't know anything about the military. So they're seeing a guy, cool stuff, um, kind of stoic attitude to a degree. Like they don't understand what it actually looks like. So they understand that they're for the most part just going to jump to, um, you know, you see dual tubes. You're like, oh, special operations. This is exactly it. You know, dual tubes and fucking kickflips, bro. And that's what they're thinking. Yeah. So, yeah. And- and you know what? But it, it, that's a small part, but 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 more, more. And, and and I've been doing it with action, time after time, year after year. Uh, you know, this thing is not a sprint; it's a marathon. Um, and another thing to, to level up the community is, you look, man, we're we're warriors and stuff like that. It, but and there's a lot of dudes who are willing to to die for each other. But we need we need more people willing to live for each other, man. We're not addressing our mental health is not good. You, hey, if you're fucking scared to do psychedelic therapy, guess what, man? I was fucking scared when I went to go do it. I, I, was, I remember driving or being driven to the fucking clinic, and, and I was hoping we would get in a car accident. I'm like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. But guess what? After it, when I woke up crying and I fucking then I could open up and talk to my wife and talk to my friends and talk to the therapist, bro, it changed my fucking life. And we all need to do that. We all need to, if we're warriors, the gear, the Gucci gear is awesome. But man, we, as corny as it sounds, we are the weapon, the body, the mind, right? The mind is in the body. So we, the body's the fucking weapon. And we need to work on our, our conditioning, flexibility, mobility, physical, and mental health. And as a community, we are horrible at it. Oh, uh, yeah. This country, because I, I went to school to become a registered dietitian, and I'm only five credits away, five credits away from my bachelor's in nutrition and dietetics. Fucking. 50% of this company is uh, of this company of this fucking country is overweight, which overweight. better community is there. How can we be the tip of the spear of the American people when half of us by the numbers are fucking obese or overweight? We, that, that can't be it. We have to call ourselves out, give ourselves positive motivation or some dudes um, act better. If someone's just like, yo, bro, you're fucking, you're not the standard fucking fix yourself. Come with right. us work out let's do this together right i'm not just gonna talk shit um and you know i'm fucking tired of it man i'm, I'm tired of my you know i had a homie who i deployed with and this dude was a fucking warrior and and that dude was as he was a, contra- a contractor during the the afghan pullout man and he saw some shit as a contractor that you know fuck with him and 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 he was at my house and we were chilling and then not that long after he left the house maybe a couple weeks the dude fucking Bought a hotel, you know, uh, for the night and fucking just shot himself. Hmm. And, and there's so many of us, man. We There's so many of us who have had friends who either they, they're killing themselves, they've killed themselves, or let's be honest, they're killing themselves slowly with the pill, yeah. with the alcohol, with yeah. the uh, toxic, Not and I hate using that word because so many people have fucking overused that word. Yeah. But th- that negative, e like, this feeling, bro, of, of, of being angry all the time, but not doing anything and complaining all the time, but not doing anything and being so upset, bro, do you really want to be on your deathbed and be like, you know what, man, I wish I was more angry and, and I wish I complained more about shit that I, I had no energy to actually focus and do anything about, you know? And so 
I've been doing that with my community, right? I've, I've been doing that, and 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 I feel like the people around me have benefited. I benefit from them. We benefit from each other, and we're building something legit here in Southern California. When I first got here, dude, I would extend the hand to people, and they would see it as weakness, right? Like, oh, you're some fucking grown man trying to you trying to make friends, bro? Fucking lame, dude. Yeah. You know? Um, I think that uh, that that mindset that we have, at least mentally, right? That's something that's kind of bred into us. It's kind of an indoctrination in uh, at least in the infantry and soft realm in general, right? Is like, don't go to the fucking doctors. You don't need to be seen for that. Like tough it out, fucking change your socks, you know, take ibuprofen, sip water, you know, when you're legitimately hurt. And that carries over for a lot of guys in, you know, in their entire careers and they get out. I've seen plenty of dudes that are like missing limbs and shit that are only getting 30%. And in dudes that have been sitting in fucking S1 that are, have, have 100, that have never, and have never done anything. Right. And it's, it's, it's because of that mentality. And like, I'm a, I'm a year out from getting out, man. I'm a, I'll be at 12 years next year, 12 years in the, inf- or, or I'll say 12 years in 10 years in the infantry. And I'm like, you know what? Like this last year, no shit. I was at 13 months. And I was like, you know what? I talked to my, my buddy Reggie and he's like, dude, get, go get seen. He's like, go see mental, uh, you know, go see physical therapy, go see um, like mental health people, go see all these people. He's like, get it documented, man. He's like, you can do not get out and not get everything that you worked your ass off, you broke your body for. He's like, absolutely fucking not. He's like, do not do that. He's like, I see plenty of dudes, you know, blue cord, you know, blue cord, green beret, whatever, getting out and not getting hundred um, percent, you know, with their bodies being absolutely altered, you know, from, from their service. He's like, so he's like, suck, he's like, suck the fuck up. He's like, go get seen, man. He's like, your body is probably, you're probably, most people are so used to pain that shouldn't be normal. Yeah. This period, like you're, you're walking around, your knees are cracking, your back's fucked up and compressed and you're walking around. You're just like on an average, you're, you're just sitting at a four in pain daily and you just, you pop a Motrin and you just keep it going. And that's such a toxic fucking way to live. Right. Yeah. So and- it's like letting guys know that it's okay to go get seen. It's okay to take care of yourself. You get one body for the rest of your life. Like go take care of yourself, man. Get, get seen, get better. Yeah, man. And I feel like if we, because um, there might be some things I'm forgetting, but I feel like if we level up as a community, right, which won't be fast, right? People want things instant, right? They want their food instant. They want the coffee instant. Look, look, things, it's going to take some time. Uh, and, and I'm not the only one out there doing some good work. I know there's a bunch of other dudes, but the, the reality is we're outnumbered. We're outnumbered by yeah. by dudes who, who say shit like, I don't really learn how, how to do martial arts because I'll just fucking shoot somebody. Bro, in reality, you're fucking scared. You're scared to get your ass out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you, if you're like fucking running's fucking dumb because uh, I'm gonna you know you just hurt your knees for what for nothing, bro go swim go do something. The point is you don't want to go do cardio because cardio kicks your ass because I've seen yep. it we've all seen it we've all been there and I feel once we actually level up as a community we will attract the people in the middle that are kind of hesitant to enter this side whether it's you know if you want to make it such a, a, a cutthroat line left and right right blue and red but it's like the dudes who are you know what maybe maybe i want to get into guns maybe i want to you know maybe i care more about the second amendment than 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 i never did you know or care about my own safety or care about my own well-being and and i want to enter these world and know survival skills or whether it's like just craft skills or whatever it is right yep we attract these people and we keep these people and we keep the people that are in this community by making it a fucking welcoming positive community i'm not saying we gotta hug and kiss each other <laughs> but bro he, yeah we, you've seen the comment section right it's oh fun. yeah man it is all too easy for people to just be straight up negative and once again that's because consequence today is so it's so far removed from everything that we do for the most part right you can get online and be an asshole to a dude you'll never see in your fucking life you can go online and fucking talk shit about somebody's mind. You did that shit in real life against someone, you'd be getting hands more than likely, right? Um, so it's, at, it's just one of those things. At, at, at a minimum, because how I grew up, hands were the minimum, right? Yeah, exactly. I've, been, I've been stabbed. I got stabbed on my head. I got stabbed in my back. Uh, I've been shot at. So some of these dudes online, when they talk, uh, uh, I usually just say, I'll comment like, hey, I love you, whatever, right? Um, <laughs> But sometimes I feel froggy, man. No one's perfect, right? So sometimes I feel froggy and I'm like, look, hey, I, I, I train at, at this gym, that gym. I mean, I'm there all the time. Come meet me. Yeah, exactly. And I never say, let's fight. I always say, hey, we can talk about whatever you want in person. Right? 
and, and watch that energy change. Yeah, most likely we're not gonna fucking talk, right? I and I've I've said that to other fucking soft dudes who say some shit and be like, bro, I'm I'm not hard to find. I'm here here, and and when I do events, um, I never have to get security because we are security. Yo. Everyone at the fucking event that's on on my side has guns, so we yeah. don't, I don't need security. But every time I have an event, especially the big events, I'm like, today might be the day. Today might be the day that someone's like, you know what? I am going to go fucking go over there, you know? And and I live my life like that every single fucking day. Anyways, I've been like that because of the streets. Because, bro, you can't kill, go out your fucking door and, and act like today's going to be a super chill day when you're a fucking in, in the world of guns and drugs and violence and, and all that stuff. You know, it's not like a deployment where you, you can leave and that shit that shit's across the fucking ocean yeah. oh yeah the mo it's not even the moment you open your door because we've had our houses shot up yep. right it's even at your fucking house yep yeah man um it's it's a far cry but it's it's a very very different world and we uh let, we, we'll, let's backtrack real quick because we talked about fighting for those who are undecided right people that are sitting in the middle um, and kind of how it's our job to be a steward of the community, right? Um, especially with, once again, we talked about, like, the people that are on the opposite end of the spectrum, we don't have to worry about fucking turning them, guys. Ten, t nine times out of ten, there's nothing you're going to be able to say that's going to uproot them from their ideology and move them to your side. That just is what it is. So those people are a lost cause. <laughs> but the people that are sitting on the fence that can sway one way or another, um, you know, which is why I find the cannibalistic side of the, the Second Amendment community to be so fucking terrible. Um, and the veteran community, it's just as bad. Like, I, there's a whole ass phrase now for guys that are like that. They call them like bro vets and shit now. So now it's like a whole ass term for yeah. these kind of cringy ass fucking dudes. Um, and that's their first exposure to the community, right? Like, if that's your first impression of a community, what the fuck makes me want to stay around that community? Nothing, right? And so now you've lost a potential ally to the other side because what you couldn't you couldn't fucking tie your ego in for a fucking second to kind of come down to his level he doesn't know anything he knows he doesn't know anything and he's just looking for someone to extend that you know extend their hand out and be like hey man let me show you a couple things yeah it's way more receptive to that right and it's like oh shit man i didn't even know and that's that's kind of the frustrating part about the whole thing right because I, I see it all the fucking time i'll go into a comment section or something like that and uh, there's a guy that's like just asking about his build or whatever. And he's like, hey, I don't really know much. So, and, and there's somebody just roasting him, right? He's like, you fucking poor, you blah, 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 blah. You don't have dual twos, bro, blah, 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 blah. It, it, it's, it's crazy. And I'm just looking at this motherfucker like, really, my guy? Like, the guy is just looking for some direction. And you absolutely, you're the absolute worst part of this fucking community. If you can even call it that sometimes. Like, it is a community, but sometimes it doesn't resemble one. <laughs> so it's just like it's your job to kind of like bring it back a little bit i'm like there's one most of the guys that are talking about this gear and equipment and stuff like that have never fucking used it they've had it ne never not once in their fucking lives they've never fucking actually had to use the gear that they have which is why they run from trend to trend to trend to trend is because mission typically dictate dictates what gear you're going to be using or what gear that you need and if you have it you swap it out and if you don't you make do Right. You have, a, you know, your pace plan or whatever for whatever it is that you need to do. Um, so it's it, it, that's that's definitely um, probably one of the worst things I've seen in the community is the is the cannibalization of people that aren't decided. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, but I, I think little by little, it's it's it, yeah. our community. It's been a battle, but I feel like a lot of good dudes are out there. Um, um, helping each other out and and i think it'll i think it'll die down man or at least, yeah. at least that's i've always been my entire life you know you don't you don't get to be where i'm at by fucking being negative all the time yeah you you can't and that's uh that's another thing too is people being uh we, they they call it being doomer pilled right or black pilled right and they're just like oh man the world's shit and everything is going to hell and it's super easy to get caught up in that man and it's just like no nah, man draw back man my biggest thing is, is even with like the, the Israel and Hamas and all that stuff like that, I'm like, I got nothing, I got nothing to say about it because it's not, it, it's not something that's controllable for me. So if it's not, I, I say one of my biggest things is saying control the controllables, right? If it's not something I can directly influence, why am I letting it ruin my day? 
like and that goes for things at work too like things that are well within like in reach of me but i still have no i have zero uh power to change i'm just like yeah all right dude fuck i guess we sending it like that's just how you have to take take life man because otherwise you're going to be up here stressed out about a bunch of shit you can't do anything about yeah definitely it's the only way um uh, mentorship of men so i know that's pretty heavy i don't i don't do too much of like mentorship online i'll be honest with you yeah. I, throw, I throw out lots of things for people to learn um to kind of move forward as a community together that's kind of my take on it but i don't really directly mentor people but i know you do so you want to talk to us a little bit about that yeah i i don't do anything online i i, try, I do try to answer um messages as much as possible and then i started a youtube channel because i, I kept obviously answering kind of like the same questions over and over so i just like oh, i'll make a youtube video well shit, i gotta make a youtube channel and then i'm like hey here check the, check out the video you know usually it's a rasp or ranger school question i'll be like here yeah video and if you have any more specific questions then then message me right right and I think the video does the work but anyways I, I don't do any online mentoring but where we do the mentoring is through, through the company defense strategies group right um one of the last groups we mentored was san jose state football team we mentored uh, 12 of their new uh, up and coming leaders, right? Some of them were already leaders and some of them were about to be leaders and and we do some mentoring. And we've also done a bunch of millionaires and and, and, and people in the business world. And, and, and what, what we've come to find out is that they seek it. Other men seek this type of stuff. Like we'll do a three day event. It's not a smoking thing. It's not like, some of these companies are out there that 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 hey, if you want to go do that fine if you want to go be part of that fine but if you're gonna if I help or join I'm, I'm sorry man that's not me I, I can't but so we do we show them skills right we show them skills we put the team usually it's a group anywhere between eight to 14 we put these men and they come from all over the world the business world or whatever right the, yeah, the last team was was a San Jose State football team, but most often than not, it's not athletes. It is men from the business world, right? And we've had multiple men fucking tell us like, "Yo, like I, I learned more about myself and 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 in these three days than I did you know the last ten years at, at this job, you know." And and I'd rather be around you guys because you guys uh actually have a connection i have a connection with you and then at work it, it's just interactions interactions go do this go do that there's no meaning to these relationships you know except for the money right and and these men are seeking it right yeah. so so that's that's cool to see um you know do you have to start a company and mentor men no but i think you can you yourself be a, a ambassador of the fucking community and, and then maybe mm -hmm. like, hey man, hey, you mind if I go work out with you? You mind if I go shoot with you? Or you mind if I pick your brain at this party or at this dinner or whatever? And yep. then hopefully it'll get the ball rolling for them to start working out or 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 you know, go take whatever, a shooting class or whatever. But but we've been doing that and it's very successful. We've been doing it at this private ranch. Um, this billionaire lets us use the property. And, and it's basically a fucking, it's a playground. If you, if you go to DSG, uh, uh, Instagram and, and, and you, and you can clearly tell which one's the outdoor videos. Right. And you're like, God, yeah. it's a playground. Um, so I'm, I've been fortunate enough to, to be part of that and, and, and call that work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fucking experience sold separately. Right. <laughs> so no, that's that's awesome, man. It's then it's definitely needed in today. I, I know we spoke on a little bit earlier about like the attack on men and men not want you know not feeling like they can actually just be men without being crucified by society itself right now. Yeah, um, and hard men are needed more than ever, right? Um, yes, especially with the path that we're going down, the indoctrination of our children. Um, they need strong male figures to be leading these communities. Um, so um we've sufficiently beat that horse so we can go ahead and move on to uh, uh this is going to be a spicy a uh, very spicy topic right here um and that's going to be shooting performance versus combat principles and i guess i shouldn't say shooting uh, or shooting performance versus it should be more like shooting performance and combat principles which is really what it should be called 
Um, yeah. The reason we say that that what, what kind of um, kind of had the question go in this direction was the um, you know the guys that are in the military not liking I won't say not liking but thinking that shooting metrics and guys that are in the competition world aren't shit because they've never done it in combat. Um, false equivalency in all in all in in, in all fa all facets um, because obviously shooting performance and combat principles should be tied together. So. Um, there are places where, you know, shooting only shooting performance matters. And then obviously there's other places where you can train those combat principles and place them together. And really, we, we talked about combat principles, uh, things like, you know, utilizing cover concealment just for, to give you guys an idea. Um, and then shooting performance, right? You should absolutely, if you're an infantryman or any type of special operations soldier that, that pulls a trigger, you should absolutely be using um, competition shooting to improve your metrics in all forms and facets. There's there's no reason not to. Um, it means you're more effective on putting rounds on the enemy. You understand um, your weapon round types a lot better because you're getting a lot more intimate with them because one, you're paying for the ammo usually up front. <laughs> so you typically yeah. take it a lot more serious when you're footing the bill for your own, uh, for your own progress. Yeah. Um, and then quite frankly, even the military at the highest levels go, go to civilian people for shooting performance. It's, it's not, it's nothing new. Um, the top tier guys have been doing that for forever. Right. And even on breaching and stuff like that, there's been guys at the top that go to like FD, FDNY to know how to learn how to run irons, right? Because they are the SMEs in, in that area. So it's not unheard of for, you know, top tier or even military in general to do work with uh, civilian groups outside of the military. Yeah. And, you know, um, and the other way around, man, uh, from from what I've seen, some competitive shooters, if you can't do some of the stuff that they do, they automatically maybe dismiss what combat is. Like I remember, <laughs> dude, somebody asked me, they're like, "Oh, they were talking about uh, uh, quick draws, like your draw time of of how many time, how, what is your time and your split shots between." Yeah, yeah. And um, and I was like, "What did you just say?" And he's like, "Yeah, well, uh, uh, you know, if you were to shoot five rounds or three rounds, like." What is your first shot and in, in, in the blitz? And I, I was just like, I was like, no one's ever asked me that. And I was like, I've never dedicated a day just for that. So, and then I remember he looked at me like, oh, like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> and I remember like, bro, you're, first of all, like, you're at my course. Like, yeah, yeah. And you want to learn how to shoot for, you know, small unit tactics. And, and bro, I have a lot of experience. And my combat footage has millions of views. And the people who I was deployed with have written books, given TED Talks, been on Fox, and, all, and on Bay Ass Podcasts talking about the shit that we did. Um, so when when he gave me that look, like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. I was just like, bro, like, <laughs> homie, I, I'm not saying, first of all, look, I'm not saying a quick draw is not important. I'm not saying that, okay? Uh, I'm just saying <laughs> for him to look at me and be like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about uh, I'm go talk to mike which is you, the boss and the seal right i'm gonna, I'm gonna go talk to the seal because he, he knows what he's he you know but oh man um because guys like uh i was talking to this with somebody look a quick draw is important right it's cool but i don't know about you but i don't fucking walk around with my holster i'm not a cop right i don't i don't so outside timed draws are fucking chill but like i'm not a cop so it's not that important to me and then conceal carry like i i bro when i'm driving i don't, I don't it's not in my fucking belt it's not even in the glove compartment and depending on what neighborhoods i'm in it's underneath my fucking leg like my thigh and sometimes i'm already aware and have my hand on it it's like yep. quick draws are important but look if you have a i'm not sure what's a hot time these days i don't know but but, but give me a number give me a number i uh, know uh 0.86 okay so if you got 0.86 bro that's 0.86 because you know it's fucking coming you're yeah. practicing for a real world, real world scenario and we'll give students who some of these are competitive shooters we'll give them airsoft guns and during some of our 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 classes we'll be like all right as at some point i'm gonna i'm gonna attack you I'm talking to you right now and we're talking and then I'm going to, or, or, or we're doing something and then we go attack them and they can't, they don't draw enough uh, on us because 
the timer, even if you use a delay timer, you're prepped to know something's gonna happen to fucking draw. And and one of the dudes, I won't name him because I like the guy. He's like he's like a friend now. He couldn't fucking draw on me. And I'm like, bro, like, do you kind of not do you? I'm not saying don't practice that, but do you see how you kind of had? And he himself said it, false sense of security because I had a a point eight six, fucking eight six draw, and I can't do that with you yeah. and in special operations dude do we tell the taliban hey we're coming get ready no right what do they do what do we use the element of surprise right mm -hmm. as a criminal when we would go rob people guess what did you do you think i told them i was going to go rob somebody there's plenty of videos online to show you that these not the dumb ones the smart criminals yep wait for the right opportunity to get you off you know fucking cut off guard and oh, yeah. because these dudes even have guns and they give up the gun, right? So I'm not saying don't do a quick fucking drop, but what I'm saying is you're, you're, you, it's a false sense of security, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. It, well, enough of that. And then someone's going to, someone's going to get all fucking bar because of this, whatever. <laughs> but, no, I don't think it will. Sure. There's probably going to be someone that gets butt hurt. Sure. Yeah. That but is what it is. You're not, you're, there's always going to be one. That's what I'm trying to get at. And, and, you know, so the the social, and I've said this multiple times in all my courses, social media has done us a huge disservice because uh, everything is 15 to 10 meters from us. It's big steel plates and on I, no one misses on IG. Bro, if I, when I look at the IG videos, I'm like, am I the only one missing? Well, I'm the only one missing then. I'm clearly the only one missing because nobody misses. And always cut small, yeah. Bam, 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 bam. It's, it's always it's always multiple takes. No one ever no one ever wants to. I find that the people that are at the highest levels are some of the ones that show most of their mistakes, which is which is super strange, right? It's like, oh well, like this guy's this guy's showing me like he fucked up on a reload or he fucked up on whatever, and it's like, well, yeah, this is my time to fuck up. Like that's the point. Um, but no one ever met, you know, no one ever takes videos of their of their fuck ups. It's only of the stuff they executed flawlessly. And that yeah. uh, go ahead. I do I do short short little clips within the videos, but I also throw in like long forms. Like yeah, I, the max time is ninety seconds. I've loaded up videos that have been ninety seconds long of running a gun in because we're fucking athletes. We shouldn't be stationary. And there'll be dudes who are sh shit hot. Yep. Stationary and competitive shooting, everything's stationary. You might move five feet mm -hmm. or ten to the left or the fucking right, but guess what? In Afghanistan. In Iraq, I didn't fucking move five feet only to the left to the right. You you had to run. You had to. We're athletes. You have to fucking be athletic, right? And another thing about um, is everyone, no one can shoot standing up straight without using a fucking uh, cutout barricade. It's like, bro, I'm not saying don't use a barricade, but if you have to put your fucking rifle on a barricade for something that's like 50 meters away, what are you doing? Bakes, basic marksmanship, basic marine rifleman. Getting shit standing that's like 100 meters or 75 or somebody sometimes even more. And 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 that's just the fucking standard. But no, yeah. we will run courses and we'll be like, all right, shoot behind the barricade. And they'll post and I'm like, bro, that target is like 35 meters away. What do you, the, the barricade was to give the illusion that you're behind a wall so you Cover. Yeah, or yeah, cover uh, concealment. Enough, right? When I was in gunfights and I'm behind a fucking wall, dude, I wasn't doing the Hollywood of going to the other side and be like, oh, and just staying out there. And some of these dudes would just stay out there and shoot until they get their two fucking hits. So if they shot five, six rounds, they want their two fucking hits. And mm -hmm. it's like, bro, in real life, you're going to get fucking peeled, dude. You're not going to do that. Yeah. You're not going to do that. Um, I will fight back against you a little bit though. So I've seen competitive shooting come a long way of just like stationary shooting and stuff like that. Like dudes are like fucking move, especially in like three gun and shit like that, man. Them dudes move, bro. I've seen it. I've, I've, I've seen it, but, but that's, that's not the majority though. That, uh, or maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong because guess what? I don't pay attention to the competitive shooting world. And another thing that I, I, I don't understand um we'll we'll run some stuff right and and as you're running this, i like the high ready right i can face mm -hmm. you 
and I'm not gonna point the gun at you. I can pick up something and I just have to, right? Make sure muzzle awareness. Uh, we were running a, a, a course and some dude just kept pointing his rifle down or his pistol down range and it, as he's walking towards us. And I'm like, bro, what are you, what are you doing? High, high ready this. And he's like, uh, always pointed down range. I'm like, bro, the, the, okay, if you want to be a competitive shooter, just say you want to be a competitive shooter and you don't give a fuck what I'm about to say. But if you want to learn how to run around in a gunfight, you ha dangerous 360, homie. The Taliban and Al-Qaeda wasn't in front of me 24-7. It's 360 and fucking above you, right? You have to be able to run left, right, and, and, and have muzzle awareness, man. We're, we're running around a fucking village. Uh, do you, can you imagine that all of us were just pointing our rifles and we're running to the left and to the right? and Make sure the rifle's that way. It's bad habits, and people think, oh, you, yeah, but when the time comes, I, I won't act like that. I'm going to rise to the occasion. No, you're not. You're going to fall to the your level of training. You know, it's the it's like the dude who's like, don't worry, bro. I see red. When, when I, I'm going to fucking knock out. No, no, you might not, bro. There's enough videos online of dudes who are trained whooping fucking ass, man. Yeah. And you can find them, and it's not hard. And guess what, man? The, the dude who got his ass whooped, didn't want to get his ass whooped. He probably had this false sense of confidence. Um, and that's what sometimes, sometimes, some of the things within the competitive shooting world do that, right? Mo most recently, I don't go back and forth with people. I always tell people, look, hey, if you want to talk about something, we can talk about it online. But some of my friends aren't like, aren't like that. They like to fucking dive in and argue and whatever. And, and one of my homies, who's a SEAL, was going back and forth with this competitive shooter. And the competitor shooter shoots fast, but because um, I uh, uh, he's uh, I saw a video, and but the dude's out of shape, and that dude's talking yeah. about mindset and mental toughness, and and I'm like, bro, what mindset? What mental toughness are you gonna fucking teach this seal? Because you can shoot fast, and this is what I don't like. I'm not saying shooting fast is not helpful, but don't equate shooting fast with experience. That because you can shoot fast, therefore you have some say within um, actual combat because I like martial arts and I think there's a lot more martial artists in this world. It would be the equivalent of some dude being like, check out how good I hit pads. And because he yeah. hit pads so good, fuck the coach, fuck the fighter, the amateur <laughs> fighter, fuck them because they don't hit pads as well as I do. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, um, I think that's, clearly just a mismatch of i don't want to say of disciplines but yeah it's just it's a classic mismatch mismatching of thinking that your specific discipline which his might just be being a really good competitive shooter translates to anything else other than being a really good competitive shooter it might mean you even have really good work ethic but it doesn't mean anything else outside of that so it just like and vice versa right we we'll, let's let's take it to the other side right so navy seal right just because he's a Navy SEAL, he's been through some of the toughest training, also doesn't mean he can fight, right? And we talked about that as well. 100%. So that so we have it's one of those things where it's like, all right, cool. If you're if you're good at this thing, don't try and make it translate to something else because it doesn't. Um, and, or not always. Excuse and me. So, and a hundred percent, man. And some people fucking don't want to just admit that. And for the dudes, I'm. And this is the same way we're talking about. You're not gonna um, convince the people from the far left, right? But there's some dudes right now in the competitive shooting world uh, and their friend who's the, or who's going to listen to this, and I, I'm not going to convince them. But there's one or two, even if at least there's one or two that's like, you know what? I got to change my ways, and I'm going to start doing this, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to act like this. I'm like, and bro, I, I kick it with competitive shooters. They can teach me to be better handgun. Yeah. Oh, as a ranger, we didn't shoot handguns. Like, that wasn't our primary weapon uh, is a handgun. So when I got out and I'm thinking – Oh, I can. I know how to shoot, and then it turns out, hey, guess what? You're not a fucking A plus fucking pistol shooter. Well, I gotta learn. So who's <laughs> yeah? Some of the people that I was like, yo, dude, let's go shooting more because you fucking run it really well. Mm -hmm. Our So by no means think that I'm being like, oh, competitive shooting sucks, or they have nothing to offer. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we need to know our place. And before yep. about the 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 SEAL teams does. There's dudes in the gun community who's, who don't know how to fight. And, and by the numbers, you're more likely to get in a physical altercation than you are in an actual gunfight here in the United States. Yeah. And dudes, if they really care 
about self-defense, about protecting themselves or their loved ones, they need to learn how to fight. And and someone's going to be like, yeah, I'm just going to fucking shoot them. Uh, first of all, you to cross that line, very few people can actually do it. Very people know what it takes and then how they're going to feel themselves if they actually did shoot somebody. And then not to mention, you say that and the people around you might be yes men and they'll be like, yeah, that's right. But guess what? And maybe they're all yes men and they're dumb, but or maybe one of them is like, is nodding with you and is not really um, on your side. Because guess what? You can fool people by saying that, but you're not fooling us. The reality is you're fucking scared. All right? You're fucking yeah. scared. Get your ass kicked. And by someone who, who on the outside world, you probably wouldn't respect because he might be a nerd. He might be into, um, what is that, anime? Yeah, he might be, he yeah. might be an anime freak, man. I don't know, dude. He might dress like a fucking dog. I don't know. But what I'm saying is, this dude that you probably may not respect, mm -hmm. the goth or a fucking bum, smoke weed skater, surfer dude. I don't know, man. Just imagine something that you don't respect. They're probably at the gym because the gym brings all types of people together, right? Oh, yeah. And but the reality is, we need we need to learn how to fight, man. We we had we had fucking obviously most a lot of the dudes that I kick with are veterans. Um, and one of them was a SEAL. He brought his Navy. He's got a, a SEAL Team 6 buddy who just got out. We took him to the gym. He kind of got his ass handed to him. And he said he wanted to train more and train more and train more. And guess what? I haven't fucking seen him. Yeah. Ever. And I haven't even seen him that, oh, yeah, maybe he went to another gym or whatever. Look, that feeling of getting your ass kicked, it's not good. But once you get after your ego and you start learning, bro, I get I get my ass kicked every fucking week. Time, every, yep. every other Hey, I'm getting fucking tapped out left and right by these black belts, and one of them dresses like in these fucking Adidas jumpsuits. I love the guy. I love the guy. He's got a mole. He's got a mullet and a jumpsuit, bro, and he's whooping oh my God. all the time, dude. Yeah. <clears throat> no, yeah, man. That's that's some real shit, man. Um, I uh, let's see. I think it was she was probably about four or five years ago. Now I was on the Fort Bragg boxing team for a while. And yeah, same thing, man. Like I was nowhere near the most experienced boxer on that fucking team. Probably the least experienced, actually. And that, and that, I came from a martial arts background as well, man. But once again, you have that time lapse, dude. You pretty much starting over. Yeah. <laughs> so you have a time lapse of six, seven years, and then you hop back into something like boxing. Like martial arts and boxing are not equivalent. They're they're very different. Um. So yeah, man. I've been on the other end of like one being out conditioned, where you know there's. There's a whole three three minute round left, and you're fucking gassed, and you're yeah. and, the boy, and the dude that you're facing knows it. <laughs> so you're sitting there getting teed off on for three fucking minutes, and you come you know you come to work with a black eye the next day, and you're like, yeah, it is what it is, and everyone's like, damn, what the fuck happened to you, motherfucker? You got a big you got a fucking black eye. It's like, hey man, fucking getting this fucking work, dude. But guess what? It, it's it's long days. You know this, man. Yeah. But you these gyms, bro, like two hour, three hour sessions. And it's that it's at the end of the day. It's usually not in the beginning of the day. It's usually like work and then go. And you're like, yeah. bro, this is rough. Like, and it takes discipline to stay with that 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 you know stay with that type of uh, that type of schedule. Um, yeah, man. I mean, I've been I've been training martial arts and, and competing since 2011. Um, you know, so so it, it's a grind, but I think it's worth it, man. It, it, it te you learn more about yourself about the world because you interact with other people that most likely you probably weren't enough, man. And and before I forget, on the flip side, if, you, if you're if you not that much into guns and you're somehow the people that you attract, right, or maybe might be martial artists, guess what, man? If you really care about safety and protection, you need to learn how to start shooting because uh, you can be a fucking black belt. Guess what? One of these fucking savages with a rifle, if shit fucking got going, like that, what is it, the uh, that book, The Road? Or... I've, I think I've seen a movie called The Road. I don't know. If I, it might be might have been based off the book. Yeah, the, 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 there's a book. But if, anyways, like end the world shit. Guess what, man? Your fucking black belt is not going to fucking work because the dude who's just a basic rifleman is going to fucking take your shit. He's going to take yeah. your life and going to make you his bitch because that's the reality of things, right? So you need both, right? Yeah. You need both. Um, and it's a grind, man. I fucking get it, bro. There's, <laughs> this doesn't come easy to me. I wake up. And guess what? Sometimes I do have my lazy days. Sometimes I'm like, you know what? Guess what? I'm not going to fucking work out. I'm going to fucking, I'm not going to go dry fire. I'm not going to go shoot. But more often than not, I beat that inner bitch in me and I get up 
And at the end of the day, guess what? Most often than not, when I'm like, hey, I wish I didn't go to box, I don't want to go to boxing, or I wish I didn't, I don't want to go to jujitsu. At the end of the day, after that session, I'm like, I'm fucking glad I did. Yep. There's never a day where you went where you were fucking that you're like, you know what? I fucking hated that. I should not have gone today. Yeah. <laughs> there's ne never a day. Because there's always a con there's always that commonality with everybody that's there. Everybody there, everybody is there to fucking grind, dude. Yeah. Everyone. Everyone's there to grind. Someone's hurt in some type of way. And yeah, man, it's it takes so much more intestinal fortitude to hop in the ring or the mat with somebody and like you're like, you know what? This dude's probably about to tune me the fuck up, but yeah. fuck right. it, we ball. <laughs> I, I just got into jujitsu not that long ago for I, I did I competed in Muay Thai and kickboxing. It was it, I was at the boxing gym, at the Muay Thai gym, and I remember I'm a blue belt now in jujitsu, but I remember when I first went to my first jujitsu class. The dude who I used to spar with, like during sparring nights, I remember like he was a jujitsu guy, and I looked at him, and I remember thinking like, "Oh, I remember you. Like, you're not that threatening, so I can probably take you." <laughs> he, he was a brown belt. Famous I, last words. <laughs> I I fucking must have tapped maybe seven times in that <laughs> round, and I remember going home being like, "I've trained stand up for X amount of years." And this dude fucks me up. Like, what's going on? Do you, can you imagine the, the the ego blow, the pride blow, the and then being, you know what? I'm gonna go tomorrow. I'm going tomorrow. Yep. That's a choice you make every fucking day. But yeah, I think that's uh, I I enjoy that type of culture where that is the norm right you have people that just go in there and they just grind dude even on the even on the bad days you might not have a fucking good day that happens that happens literally in every facet of your life where it's just like damn that just wasn't my fucking day and then guess what that has in common with every other day it came to a fucking end next day run it back so yeah man that's uh i think well, one more thing i'll add to like the whole gun conversation too right is while yes you should know how to fight you should absolutely know how to execute or uh, you know exercise violence of the highest degree you also should know some de-confliction techniques that is huge too especially for anyone that is a, is that is a fighter understands that they are not trying to start shit out in public yeah. most people that know how to fight generally don't want to fucking fight in public for a few reasons right yeah man i got a bunch of pro fighter friends uh they're in bellator ufc so on right <clears throat> and the They'll tell you, I don't want to fight. And, nope. and bro, I when I was a gang member, I wanted to fight all the fucking time, bro. And, and, and I would carry guns and we'd do the damn thing. But guess what? The, now, now that I'm more deadlier than I've ever been in my life, guess what? I don't want to fight. Nope. If, I, if I'm at the if I'm at the club, which I rarely am, but it's a, if it's a big event or whatever, friend's birthday, and we go to the club, and some dude I know, it was his fault that bumped me. You know what I say? Hey, oh, excuse me. I apologize, me. man. My bad. Hey, my, yep. my, have a good night. Right, bro. I don't want to fucking fight. The, 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 the we need to work on inner inner communication skills. Our yep. communication, I think, as a whole, fucking sucks. How many dudes are fucking angry and maybe yell at their wives or fucking snap on their kids or and because you, you're not communicating how you feel and why and how you got there. And then it's the other way around, man. If there's a fucking situation, you have probably escalated that fucking thing because you mm -hmm. could have said the same thing, but have communicated completely different and got yep. the same result, right? Or a better result. Um, so along with the shooting, with the fucking, um, you know, hand-to-hand -hand stuff, bro, yes, you, you're fucking so right. Communication. Yep. Soft skills, man. Soft skills are... <laughs> So Oscars are a large part of the fucking game, man. And, and and if we're being honest here, like violence is the is the the minority of those of these situations, right? Because you nine times out of ten, you can control the outcome of that situation just by how you're communicating. Yep. So if, if this guy is flying off the handle, like the higher he is, the calmer you get. Counteract that shit. Be like, hey man, like that's my bad. You know, and that doesn't mean be a you know necessarily be a bitch, but there are times to be very extremely fucking principled too, right? Yeah. There's like, a lot. There's, yeah, exactly. Like some dudes being an asshole, like he, you know, disrespects my wife in front of me. I'm like, hey man, I'm I'm gonna give you a choice. You can apologize to my wife, or I this isn't there's no malice in my heart for you right now, but I gotta handle you. 
like there's there's no there's <laughs> there's nothing I, I don't want to do this but i'm like you're 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 that's not okay right and in that and on the other end of that too is making sure that my wife didn't instigate it <laughs> so yeah. understanding like hey like i'm not gonna let her write a check that i have to cash yeah <laughs> so it's a lot of that protection and, and provision and stuff is, is um is preventative measure right so let's prevent this bad thing from happening instead and sometimes it's best to just let it go yeah because uh, you know at the end of the day the only thing that's gonna happen is someone's gonna end up in jail someone's gonna end up dead or in the hospital and both y'all gonna end up in court nine times out of ten not worth it most of the time so but yeah dude um shit i think we kind of rolled through like way more than we were we had intended to but we didn't even get to like the cartel stuff like this was something that uh i made a video on pretty recently um because obviously we have the the huge surge of the the minute the modern minute men and stuff like yeah. that right um and a question came up uh and i'm gonna do i'm gonna use this present button because i have yet to use it um, let's see if we can, let's see if we can use this and show that, uh, I'm actually getting kind of savvy with this shit. Uh, let's see window. All right. It looks like I'm not super duper savvy with this. So <laughs> I'm going to try and let me see if I can get this shit up. And. All right, that image is up. So now let me see if I can actually pull it into StreamYard. Present, share screen. All right, there we go. So here is the question that came out. Um, can you see that? Yeah. All right, so this was the question that was asked in an AMA to my buddy, Gio. Uh, he's like, if the car sales have NVGs, uh, how do you think our training matches them? And once again, um, I got called a bro vet for this answer, um, but my answer remains the same. Nonetheless, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't translate in the slightest, right? It doesn't translate to pretty much any other organization. I'll be uh, unless, like I said, the the things would have to look extremely different for it, for that to change. But if you're talking about a criminal organization, whether that be a gang, whether that be the mafia, whether that be even the fucking government, a concerted effort is needed by a lot of people to make difference. Um, if you're talking onesies, twosies, a squad, no, because one, we have to, we still have to face the law, right? Because we are still uh, quote unquote law abiding uh, citizens, right? So we're still very much subject to the law. That's the cool part about um, being a criminal. You don't give a fuck about the law. So you go, you're going to bang regardless of whatever happens. And then on the opposite end of that, as a criminal, there's no rules for me. Like, so your family, your family's free chicken, bro. And that's what's going to happen with this. It, it commonly happens with cartels is that they go after military members, families and stuff like that with no hesitation. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I'll bring up the video to kind of play, um, to kind of give some more context to this as well. So, so right off the bat, right? Um, I want to uh, I want to bring it back. Uh, look, the, the, the a lot of us in in the GWAT, I mean, we, we, we're part of the GWAT, right? There's a lot of us. Yeah. And 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 we try to implement what what our experiences were with the Taliban, with Al Qaeda, and try to put the cartels in that same category. And we can't because it's a different animal. Okay. It's it if you try to simplify it, yes, yeah, yeah oh. Bad guy, bad guy, doing bad stuff, whatever. Just get rid of them or whatever. But the, you have to understand that this, them, they are a different thing. And they, they need to be addressed in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, now you're not going to have success. Because, for example, the Taliban doesn't have Netflix shows. The Taliban doesn't have Grammy Award winning artists making songs about them. Right? The, it, the Taliban doesn't have soap operas about that lifestyle. They are so engraved in the culture, in the people. They are the people. They have done so many actual good things within the community. So to tell them that they are the bad when the government, meanwhile, is corrupt and, and in many ways not giving them things. And then this side is, it's difficult to get these people to even be on your side yep. to 
to, to go against them. The Taliban will use fear and power. They're using actual paved roads and schools and money into the into the actual community. Is there some fear and power? Yes, but not in all the areas, right? Um, and not to mention, they're not dumb, right? So look, I'm not a uh, uh, I'm the first one to be born here in my, in, in, in my family, right? Um, I love this country. Obviously, I'm Mexican. I'm, I'm part. I'm 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 proud of, of of my culture, my roots, and stuff like that. But hey, man, this is the best country in the world. All right, it's the best country in the world, and I want it to succeed. Should we let everybody and anybody in here? No, but we should let somebody because I remember um, I used the military to get my 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 fa my two of my family members' papers, right? And and during their citizenship for my mom, they were saying that it happened to be the year of the Olympics. They were saying that a hundred and X amount of, of I, can't, I forgot what it was, but it was a hundred and something Olympians representing the United States that, are, that help get medals. Guess what? Aren't fucking born here. Right. And that's just, an, the Olympics is just an example. There's many examples in where we've had the best of the best from somewhere else. And guess what? We, we took them. We brought them into our side. So obviously there is, some good outside, even though right. this is, in my opinion, the best country in the world. Hey, we we can't think like no one else has anything else to fucking offer, right? Mm -hmm. So with that being said, look, we we are arguing and fighting about the wrong things, man, and we're not seeing and, and we're not paying attention to other things. Like for example, the wall thing. I'm not saying don't have an obstacle there, but like, look, to spend so much money on a wall is Put something, but to spend all your efforts and think that the wall is going to be the answer, it's not. You're, 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 you can't think of these guys as dumb. You might see a video and one of them do a dumb thing, but that's like a low level guy. That's like saying, oh, in the Afghanistan, you guys only fought dumb farmers. Was there a dumb farmer here and there? Probably, yeah, man. But guess what? We fought fucking foreigners out there. We fought mm -hmm. well equipped and well trained people. So to to not respect the enemy like the Taliban. You're, you, you're doing a, yeah. a fucking disservice. And look, man, <clears throat> people have been talking about the wall, but guess what, man? The brains over there, they've already been thinking about the wall before there was even a big wall, right? right. That's how you got the tunnels. You got, and, and you have to understand some of these people, they're, they're thinking next level, man. They have uh, US born people, family members or, or whatever, and they're going into business, legitimate business, legitimate. So, to think, oh, it's a simple, we'll go wipe them out. We'll, we'll just go do this. We'll go do that. Man, this, it's a different beast. It's a different animal, man. Um, I, I have, I'm torn of, of, for, for a lot of things about, about these things, right? Like, for example, I'm like, look, man, I love Mexico, dude. Fucking, uh, when I go over there, but guess what? When I go over there, even though I'm Mexican, guess what? I'm the gringo. Because yeah. and people don't know that, but you're right. But guess what? There's Mexicans that don't fucking want me there because I'm mm -hmm. born, right? I'm not like them. Um, so obviously I don't like that part. Obviously I don't like to be a gringo. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't. You know, I'm just over there visiting, man. I was born where I was born, right? None of us. None of us had any say in where the fuck we were born, right? right? Do I hate seeing? I fucking hate seeing innocent people get hurt, man. Um, do I understand kind of what's going on over there? Cause if you've heard some of these people talk, right, we have pharmaceutical companies and by no means am I justifying anything, but look, when you hear these people talk, you got to hear them. You got to hear them to how to think when you have pharmaceutical companies who did the opioid, opioid fucking crisis here in the U S right. Yeah. None of them are in jail. Oh yeah. No, that's yeah. This right. is a tiered society. There's no doubt. But the man down south supplying something that's doing just as much harm is the criminal. Let's mm -hmm. go get him. Let's so, but we don't hold that standard the same way. Let's go get those criminals who fucking fucked over us. Fuck, how many veterans have blown their brains out on pills and shit like that, right? Yeah. We need to get them. So these people look at how we are and how we are, they use that against us. Yeah. And, no, you're, and, not, you're not wrong. And, and you know, so to to what I don't get too deep into this thing, right? Someone someone asked me like, oh, 
what what would you do, Angel, if, if we go fight, whatever? And I'm like, but in what way? What capacity? Because you're kind of putting the U.S. in one big ass group when it's not. Because you have you have dudes in Texas, in Arizona, Nevada. They're like, yo, man, let's go fight, and they want to go fight. Guess what? Because they want to keep they sh they want to keep this white, right? Yeah. And angry, and this is their chance. But then there's people that are like, yo, because they're bad, because they give drugs to our fucking country, even though we're the number one customer, even though we are the best customer, right? And then there's people who don't like drugs, period, and they never done drugs. And if you do drugs, you must be a bad person, right? Um, any drug, right? So it, it's not like we're a, a whole here in this country, right? right? And if things were to happen, it's like, okay, but under what circumstances? What 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 ways are we going? And not to mention, bro, it's dangerous. Yeah. These people aren't, you know, you can't just say shit and not expect repercussions. There's like a, a I think he was like a TikTok star or. I know, you're I know exactly who you're talking about. It was a, some, some teenager, um, pretty big like IG or, or YouTube star or something like that, that said some shit about the cartel and they killed him. And they killed him. Yeah. And, and, and if you think <clears throat> Bro, they've been here. And then when people when people are like, oh, they're here, right? This is why I like Ed Caldron, because he said things that I've been saying, that other people have been saying. You don't have to be so deep into it to know these things, but they will guess what? They won't listen to us because we're brown. But Ed Caldron goes on Joe Rogan, and now all these things that he was saying, people want to listen to. Yeah. Bro, I even though I was born here. Uh, my family got homesick. We went to Mexico, and they're like, and then they're like, no, you know what? We're gonna go back. So I had to cross illegally or legally, whichever way you see it. I had to cross how illegals cross. Yeah. And for everything, I was eight or seven, but I remember everything. And guess what, man? Um, it's the the the. I'm giving you insight because this is my experience, right? The border, mm -hmm. the, the border crossing was three thousand dollars. You know, at some point, but guess what? Now it's tripled or quadrupled, yeah. depending, right? And if it's more, and you got the wall and the big scary wall, the big scary wall, guess what, man? People are still going in. So you gave them this, oh, it, now it's harder. So we gotta charge you more. Yeah. Right, you it, now they control that. They used to not control that. Now they do control it. Yep. Um, and they control a bunch of other things, right? Even like the lime distribution, right? Limes and shit like that, and avocados and all types of shit that they you never used to fucking control. Um. But point is, this is a different beast. Yeah. This, this is a different beast. <clears throat> and how do we solve this issue? Well. It's a lot of ways, man. And and trying to say and point the finger on one thing is, bro, how how do you think they got so powerful? You need money. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> you need yeah. And how do you get the money? Well, through the fucking number one customer, us. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 never been about solving the problem. Never. It has been. It never it has been. been. The, the, the cartel has never saw has never made enough of a problem for the government to be like, you know what? We don't want you here anymore. It's never been that. I'm pretty sure a lot of the bosses are, are literally living right here in America. Like that, that is what it is. Yeah. Um, but it's like the only thing they want is their money. As long as they're left the fuck alone to get their money, they typically stay away from Americans. And guess what? Look, look, man. And and people, which is why I never get I'm 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 diving not even deep, but I'm talking about this. I never talk about this. I'm talking about this because I saw your post, right? And then and yeah. then out. And so I'm like, sure, why not? Maybe, maybe somebody will listen. To something that, that I'm saying, right? Just like how they're listening to Ed Caldron and other people, now they're opening their eyes, man. Right? Yeah. So it's yeah. uh, that's why I'll, I'll, I'll not to mention. Oh, and the U.S. gives them the weapons, right? Yeah. Maybe directly in some instances, yeah, there might have been some stuff, but like you got the number one customer, right? Um, you got the number one. Uh, exporter of guns of their firearms where, where do you think they fucking got it man you think there's a u.s surplus store in mexico <laughs> no, no and so that's why i don't get into it man yeah. I, 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 
it's one of those things, man. It's but if it doesn't get talked about, then we end up with ignorance. So that's why I'm like, you know what? Like we, I have a bunch of those uncomfortable conversations on my page because it's got to get talked about, right? Because we we lost the art of the conversation years years upon years ago, right? I'd say even in my parents' era, we lost the we we lost the art of the conversation. We don't realize like you can't combat ideas if they're never spoken about. You have a bunch of people that sit in echo chambers for things they think to be true, and then whoever's strongest or who has the most influence just flat out wins, which and is exactly what we saw. A hundred percent. And and before I forget, two things. One, when people are like, they're the coming to the borders, and and because of the cartels, ISIS is gonna come, or 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 some. Guess they what? Here. They first of all, the, the uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The Boston bombers yep. came here. Right, they didn't come yep. to the border. The Saudis who were part of 9/11, not all of them, but some of them, didn't they come legally here? Yeah, they. I'm pretty sure they also went to aviation school here too. Yeah. <laughs> so when people, and then other people who've done attacks haven't come. Well, one day, will there probably be someone who's come to the border? Yeah. They caught people, but guess what? The cartels will never intentionally put someone in there that they know is a criminal, because guess what? It's bad for business. It, why would they destroy their customer, their number one customer, their money maker, right? Why would they cause unwanted attention to them? And, and these people are fucking the border, the fucking border. Look, I'm, I'm just telling you something that I that I know that a lot of us know. It's bad for business. Why would I do that? If yeah. I'm, bad, right, why would I do that? And not unless, they're getting, unless they're getting paid a whole lot more for the trouble, because <laughs> yeah. money does talk. Yeah, but that would. I'm talking if you're talking like nation state, but even then, like you're talking even about like Chinese, uh, like Chinese spies and shit like that. They've been coming over here the legal yeah. way for the longest time. And, and, wow, they've just been bred here. And and didn't they catch some that were part of the navy on some fucking submarine or some yep. shit? Look, man, and and this is why it pissed me off when people were like, you, you no border. You got to do it the legal way, the legal way. And they're just saying this shit. But does he even know what the fucking legal way is? No, I did. Most of us I don't. Did, I did it the legal way for, for, for two of my family members. Guess what? It's thousands of dollars. So you're telling yeah. these four people who can barely fucking make it, hey, bitch, do it the legal way. How? How? Right? They can barely fucking make ends meet. So when you have somebody who's like, hey, don't pay thousands of dollars. Pay me some, and then you can pay me the rest, and then I'll just fucking put you in. Right? So... That's why I don't talk about it because I want the system to be fixed, but both sides have never, correct me if I'm wrong, have actually sat down and made a plan or made some type of plan or some type of initiative. It's it's always just been talking points and people have been arguing to the left and to the right. That's why I focus so much more on what I can control because these fucking assholes are just having us as people, the people just argue about each other well, we get fucked and they're chill. That's the that's the whole point, right? And it's the same thing with like uh with like all the abortion stuff and and like really hot topics. Like they, it was never put into law to where it can't be touched or put into like an amendment or something like that, because it's it can forever be used as ammo now on either side of the uh, either side of the issue. So there's yeah. certain things that they're just not gonna give up and they're not gonna get give protection. Because it allows them to continuously use it as a bargaining chip. That's just the way that works. It's like, all right, cool. Like, why? I was like, oh, why don't we completely shut off the border? I'm like, okay, cool. That they're, now the other side's able to use that as a talking point. Um, like, it, it doesn't matter how it gets used. Both sides can spin it in the way where it's beneficial to them, and it's always going to polarize both sides so that they can't see the larger picture. Um, so that just that that might be my tinfoil hat beginning to drop onto my head. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm loyal to the fucking foil, man, but it's, that's just, uh, that's, that's what it is. It's a lot of it is just politics, right? And like, how can I keep myself in office? How can I keep myself getting money? How can I keep myself with this, uh, you know, institutional and, you know, old, that old wealth, right? You had who, who just died? Was it Diane Feinstein who died? I think it was, I think it was her that just died. And she had like a hundred and like, 40 or 50 million dollars in assets when she died. I think she had like a 90 million dollars in her account and then like another 40 million dollar jet. 
and it was it's some crazy shit. And I was like, how when you're the amount of time you've worked in office, there's no way you've made that much money. Yeah. It's like your 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 salary is very public. Yeah. <laughs> and so you see that and you're like, well, you know what they're doing. Like they're of course they're doing it, man. Um, they're, they're, it's a, it's a, everyone thinks it's like a race war or a color war or a gender war. It's not a, it's none of those things. It is a class war and it has been a class war from the start. That's it. So, I mean, that is, that is what it is. Like you I mean, well, well, correction for, to some people, is it a race, race war? Yes. Right. To some. I'm talking like big, big picture big, from the big, top. Yeah. 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 Big picture. Yes. The, uh, big picture. Definitely, man. Um, you know, so that's, which is why I try to just do what I can fucking control, right? And guess what? Uh, again, it's it's not going to be slow. It's going to take fucking hard work. But mm -hmm. uh, the more we do it, the the, the better we'll get. We'll, we'll make great kids, right? We'll, we'll, we'll raise great kids um, so they can go out in the world and fucking represent, right? I, I, tr I just try to do, I'm just trying to do cool things. With my cool friends, yeah, man, and, and 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 make some money and fucking help my community, right? I, I, for example, um, Alex Villanueva, the the LA sheriff who was trying to run for election, he didn't fucking he didn't he didn't win his reelection, but when we there was a dinner for his reelection, I went to that dinner and I went up to him and I shook his hand. And I was like, hey, sir, I was like, I'm a former Army Ranger. But before that, I was a criminal. I used to run, you know, run around fucking selling guns and drugs. And based off my experience, the things that we used to have to do in the quiet, in the dark, and be sneaky with the rules and regulations that are now in place, these criminals were doing in, it in broad daylight. And I would call this the time for crime, the golden age of crime. Yep. Because it, your, 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 your hands are tied behind your back. The, the the approval of the police has never been lower, at least since, since when I've been alive that I can notice. Um, and and you know, I, I thank you for finding the good fight. And 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 you know, and I use my experience to just try to help. And I don't fucking know, dude. I I, I keep doing shit. And I keep surviving. And I keep living these things. And I just use the experience. I don't base it off emotion or meme or a video. If I can, if I saw it and I touched it. Or, or then it's fucking real, and, and and that's what I'm going. So, where am I going with this, man? I'm just trying to fucking live my life, dog. You know, it's the only way. It's the only way, man. But, dude, I think we, I think we quite literally covered everything that we had written down <laughs> yesterday from our conversation. Um, so. One, thanks for coming on, man. You're kind of like the first guest I've had on this, like, just shoot the shit. I don't even, I'm not going to call this a podcast. I'm not a podcaster. I don't it's consider a myself a podcaster. What's up? <laughs> I was like, it's a podcast. Uh, yeah, every, yeah, if they were going to call it a podcast, I don't like to be, I don't okay. like to call it a podcast. It's not a podcast, but I'll tell you what, man, when <laughs> podcast, they're kind of the same. <laughs> Oh man, I, I know I hate the label, man. Like same thing with like influencer, like oh you have over twenty thousand followers, you're an influence. I'm like oh god, dude. Like can I fight these labels? Because I'm I'm good without the labels. Me, I just like to fucking get people that are interesting, that know what the fuck they're talking about, to shoot the shit, inform people. Whoever wants to whoever wants to sit down and listen to it, they can sit down and listen to it. It's all good. You know, and there's no sponsorships. There's none of that shit. It is just. Two fucking, two fucking vets, two fucking homies sitting here shooting the fucking shit. That's it. Yeah. You know, and, and hopefully I, I made sense, made, made you know, uh, ex express myself properly. I'm always my biggest critic. I never watch shit because I'm always like, I, sh I meant to say this, not that, or, or whatever. <laughs> but hopefully people got the right idea, man, um, uh, of what I'm trying to say. And if not, I'm in fucking whatever. Sorry. I, I, be all right. <laughs> I just got done climbing a mountain, like literally, you fucking yeah. hours ago, you know. So, uh, and anyways, even if I didn't climb a mountain, I probably still fuck shit up. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, thank you for having me on, dude. You, you, you your posts are always it, it's a refresher because sometimes people, my friends, will share me shit or or on Facebook. Facebook is just goddamn it's garbage. Yeah. And it's these one-liner memes or thirty-second videos of of 
this is why this side is so bad and this is why this thing is sucks and this is why you fucking suck and you're just like bro there's no like deeper conversation or or anything and then and then your 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 posts are or or refresher because it's the quite fucking opposite of that man i appreciate that man definitely appreciate that um you want to go ahead and plug yourself for like your business your your page um, so that people know where yeah, to come follow yeah. um my Instagram is Angel G Cortez one seven five. Um, the, the the company I work with for is Defense Strategies Group. Uh, my company's OG Pumpkin. If you Google OG Pumpkin, we we sell rash guards to hats, to tees, hoodies, um, and sometimes every now and then like off items. Like uh, I teamed up with this knife company. Uh, we did some knives, and then skateboard company. We did skateboards. Uh, but hey, man, follow the page. We do cool shit. Um, you know, I, I did. I finally did my taxes after three oh, years. Yeah. And let the IRS know to stay off your ass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and and I finally got to see the numbers, man. In three years span, I gave over a quarter of a million dollars away back to the people, man. So, um, I live in a three bedroom apartment. That's all I need. There's food in the fridge. That's all I need, man. I grew up living on the floor. Um, I don't give a shit about followers. Some of some of the my favorite people that I kick it with have no fucking online presence. We, yep. I don't care if you weren't in the special operations community. Guess what? One of my buddies is a marine. Everything we've ever done together, he's beat me. When we were at school, while I was getting A's and B's, he was getting straight A's. If I ran a marathon in three and thirty some change, guess what? He he was three and like ten, right? And if if we lifted, he fucking lifted more than me. So like. Being in the special operations community, or if you're a veteran, it tells me that at one point you fucking gave your all. But guess what? I know soft dudes who, after they get out, got soft, literally. And <laughs> I don't give a shit about any of that, man. I just like cool people, man. So even if you're one in the service, man, I don't give a fuck, man. But come out. We're building something legit in Southern California. Um, and, you know, don't hesitate to reach out, man. Come, come and do some cool shit. Hell yeah. All right, for the rest of you guys, I'm Sky Pirate Actual, so owner of Cloaked Entry Co. We teach all manner of soft entry, so in covert entry as well. Um, course schedule is going up for next year. Uh, if you guys want to look me up on IG, Sky Pirate Actual. Um, and outside of that, if you guys want to be on this uh, this chat, I guess uh, I guess we can go ahead and call it a fucking podcast, since I guess it's already being called that um just fucking shoot me a message or i'll shoot you a message we'll get together we'll talk and then uh, we'll have you guys on here for whatever whatever subjects that we're talking about angel thanks again man for coming on seriously appreciate your, your time man oh thank you man have a good night you as well i'm just gonna end the recording here right now and recording